in the post-war years the USSR was actively developing the Arctic and the eastern regions of the country. The experience of expeditions showed that, in order to expand the Arctic transport system and increase the number of cargo shipments, icebreakers capable of working in the ice for a long time were needed. Initially steam icebreakers were used for navigation on the northern seas, and their fuel was enough for about three weeks of autonomous voyage without refueling. A little later the Navy changed over to diesel-powered icebreakers which could operate for up to 50 days without refueling. However even this autonomy was not enough, and there were cases when caravans had to spend the winter in the Arctic ice due to running out of fuel on the icebreaker. At the same time the country was actively improving the nuclear power industry, which gave a powerful impetus to the development of the Arctic transport system. According to specialists' calculations, the incorporation of a nuclear power unit into the icebreaker would increase the autonomy of the ship up to 12 months. Staking on new technology, on November 20, 1953 the USSR Council of Ministers decided to build the world's first nuclear-powered icebreaker Lenin. The ship was laid down in 1956 at the shipyard in Leningrad and solemnly launched on December 5, 1957. As you know, the launch was not the end of the ship construction, and the tugboats took the icebreaker to the dockyard. For the next two years the nuclear reactors were installed and various tests were carried out. Only in December 1959 the icebreaker was successfully delivered to the Ministry of the Navy and put into operation. Already during the first navigation through the northern seas the nuclear icebreaker Lenin showed excellent autonomy due to the nuclear power plant capacity. Thus the problem of expanding the transport system and increasing the navigation time in the Arctic was solved. Incidents on the icebreaker. Initially, the nuclear icebreaker Lenin used the OK-150 nuclear power plant, which, according to the recollections of engineers and project participants, had many drawbacks and proved to be not as reliable as it was designed to be. As a result, the icebreaker was under repairs for a considerable, if not most of the time. Several incidents in the icebreaker's reactor plant between 1965 and 1967 are described in the literature. However, it is not known reliably what levels on the international nuclear event scale they correspond to, and whether even one of them can qualify as a full-fledged accident. In February 1965 the icebreaker was repairing the main circulating pumps of reactor 2. In the process, due to operator error, water circulation briefly stopped, resulting in overheating of the reactor core. The unloading of spent nuclear fuel was stopped, and it was decided to unload the remaining fuel assemblies into a special protective container along with part of the reactor structures. Two years later, the sealed container was loaded on a pontoon and taken to Tsivolki Bay near Novaya Zemlya, where it was submerged. According to the recollections of A.A. Adryanov, deputy chief of the INC service on the nuclear icebreaker Lenin, during the navigation season in the fall of 1965 a leak was detected in the first circuit of Reactor 3. One of the two steam generators failed after only 3,000 hours of operation due to an inserted stainless jacket, which was supposed to protect the internal surface of the vessel from corrosion for several decades. As a result, the second steam generator was only able to deliver half of the reactor's normal capacity until the end of the navigation. Adryanov also recounts two incidents that occurred on the icebreaker in 1966. At the beginning of the year, a major fire broke out on the icebreaker due to a breach in welding technology, destroying the cable runs. In summer a new leak of stainless steel corrosion-resistant jackets was detected on reactor number one, and not on the steam generator, but on the reactor power vessel itself. It was impossible to remove it without replacing the reactor along with the entire reactor. According to information from Bologna, as early as 1967, according to other sources preparations, to dismantle the reactor compartment began in late 1966, the leakage of the pipeline of the third circuit was detected in one of the reactors. During the opening of the unassembled concrete biological shielding, to find out where the leak was, serious mechanical damage was allegedly done to the reactor equipment. Because of the numerous shortcomings of the first-generation nuclear power plant, it was decided to modernize it. Since by that time considerable experience had been accumulated in the operation of the nuclear icebreaker Lenin, other offshore nuclear power plants, and onshore nuclear power plants, there was an option to replace the OK-150 unit with a more advanced and modern modification of the OK-900. According to different versions, the decision to replace instead of repairing and upgrading the existing reactors was made after the accident in the fall of 1965, summer of 1966 or early 1967. It was documented by the decree of the USSR Council of Ministers on 18 February 1967.
preparation for the operation. Heavy radiation conditions and tight schedule of repairs did not allow to dismantle the reactor plant inside the icebreaker. In the course of the operation about 6,500 people could have been exposed to the maximum permissible annual rate of radiation. Therefore, to remove the OK-150 unit, it was necessary to look for more radiation-safe ways. The specialists considered various options for removing the reactor through the top deck or over the side of the nuclear ship to a floating craft or to the shore. However, after flooding the plant with a special solution for biological shielding, the weight of the reactor was too high. Moreover, together with the reactor, one wanted to unload all the equipment and constructions inside the icebreaker, which were radioactively contaminated and were not suitable for the new OK-900 reactor. After studying all possible options, there was only one left, to extract the reactor through the icebreaker's bottom by means of spot explosions. The whole operation was planned to be realized in five main stages. Stage 1. Preparatory work to disconnect the reactor from the icebreaker hull in a special coastal base near Murmansk. Stage 2. Icebreaker towage to the place of unloading and reactor burial in Savolki Bay. Stage 3. Preparatory underwater work on the icebreaker in the operation area. Installing charges. Carrying out detonation and unloading the compartment to the bottom. Stage 4. Towage of the icebreaker, escorted by ships of the Northern Fleet back to Murmansk. Stage 5. Dispatch of the nuclear icebreaker to the dock for assembling new bottom sections. The main difficulty of the operation at the planning stage was the four bulkheads that held the entire compartment with the reactor. In case of cracks or uneven explosion of charges, the compartment could have become warped and would have started to buckle right inside the icebreaker, with no way to get out of the hull downward. As a precaution, additional supports were added to the compartment to prevent warping, and each fuse was equipped with additional power circuits to ensure that all charges were detonated simultaneously. Before the operation, the Krylov Central Research Institute used a 150 scale model to study the behavior of the compartment after detonation, and the charges were tested on a 15 scale model. Cutting out the heart. After all the tests and preparatory work, the icebreaker, in tow in the company of the LEPS, and the rescue vessel Altai 1, headed for Novaya Zemlya, in Savolki Bay, to the reactor unloading site. All the operations of the third stage of retrieving the reactor were fulfilled from September 8 till September 19, 1967. Back to Murmansk the icebreaker was towed with the bottom cut out and flooded, due to which the towing speed was limited. Seven days later, on September 26, the Lenin reached Murmansk, and on October 5 it was docked to restore the bottom. A month later the work was completed, and the icebreaker went to the Zvezdachka plant in Severodvinsk to install the new OK-900 nuclear power plant. The future of the nuclear-powered icebreaker. The reactor replacement work was fully completed two years later. Since the design of the new nuclear plant differed from the previous one, and now there were two reactors inside instead of three, 204 of 675 rooms had to be modernized on the nuclear submarine. However everything was a success, and after the tests on June 21, 1970 an acceptance report was signed, as a result of which the icebreaker Lenin with a new heart was again on duty in the Arctic. After replacing the nuclear plant, the Lenin worked for 19 years more. Due to heavy wear of the hull from 1984 the icebreaker was used only during the most favorable navigation period from June till December. Five years later it was decided to fully withdraw it from service, and by that time more modern vessels for work in the Arctic had appeared. The nuclear icebreaker's propellers were dismantled, the ice reconnaissance helicopter was removed, and the reactors were mothballed. After that it was placed on perpetual anchorage in the port of Murmansk. During the time of work in the Arctic Lenin has led 3,741 ships through the ice, and he himself went more than 1.2 million kilometers, of which 1.037 million in the ice, taking part in 26 navigations. Currently, the icebreaker has a museum and an information center of Rosatom. Since 2016, the nuclear icebreaker has been recognized as a cultural heritage object of federal significance. It has a crew and a captain. They give tours several times a day, though not all the compartments. As they said on the spot, it is planned helicopter model from above, sort of looking for a decommissioned helicopter to put it on the site, and now there is also dismantled part of the crew quarters and made an interactive exhibition, in particular, how polar bears open cans of condensed milk dropped from the icebreaker tourists. If you are in the area be sure to stop by. If you were interested, thank the author by putting a like. And also do not forget to subscribe so as not to miss the outputs of even more interesting videos of my channel.
Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell and share this video with your friends. What else interesting can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.